right now, Mark Kess is here right now. And, uh, man, Kesty, first of all, thanks for joining us on this fun, rainy day. Guys, it's uh, fun to be with you. I think your rain's a little worse than our rain, from what I hear. I'm, I'm hearing back home in Connecticut, they had like ice this morning, so I'm not looking forward to getting back to that tomorrow. <laughs> that, yes, don't, don't, don't hurry. Just take your time. Maybe, yes. maybe drive back if you can. <laughs> you know, that would be nice. Uh, but in fact, by the time I drive back, I think my Friday game's in Indiana. I'll just stop there on the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kessie, speaking of the games you've been on, first one, uh, game one for the the Warriors versus the Spurs. Did you see anything that made you think the Spurs can put up a fight? against the Warriors? Well, I mean, we thought before the game that it was they were overmatched. Uh, look, the way the West uh, shook out in the end uh, when that final day came and San Antonio ended up seven, it was like the worst possible matchup you know, that they could have gotten. I think we saw that on Saturday as well. Disappointing in that LaMarcus Aldridge didn't play better. Even more disappointing uh, was the defense for San Antonio, which is one of the best. I mean, if you just look at it player for player, and Golden State came out and played its best defensive game. I mean, Steve Kerr just told us that about an hour ago. He's like, that's exactly what I wanted. We played terribly for a month. Our defense has been terrible for longer than that. And I think his biggest concern, which leads to your question, is... um, Will their heads get too big? Will they think this series is over? Will they realize it's a mismatch and we could just sleepwalk through the rest of this series? And that's what he's concerned about, that uh, he hopes they come out with the same energy tonight. Game two tip-off tonight set for 10.30. You talked about Steve Kerr and the conversation you've had with him. How about the other side? San Antonio Spurs coach Greg Popovich had a legendary post-game press conference, Classic Pop. What's his emotions been like in this series early on? Well, uh, you know, they had simultaneous press conferences today, and we went to Oakland uh, for the Golden State one. We were not at San Antonio's here in San Francisco, where I am now, but I was there yesterday for the off-day press conference, and he was even more colorful then. He was funny. Um, You know, he did get pop-like on some questions that he didn't like and, you know, spit it back at the reporters' faces. But, look, I think deep down he realizes what the task is here, and... Uh, you know, the guy is one of the top three coaches, you know, in the history of the league. Will that be enough, you know, to make this interesting? I think, you know, he expects effort, and I think that's where he was disappointed. I think his uh, uh, post game talked about we look like deer in headlights. Like, he knows that they don't have enough guys to combat Golden State, even without Steph Curry. But regardless of your talent level, you can give 100% effort, and you could execute game plan, and I think that's what disappointed him the most. And so, you know, he tried to be uh, funny at times, and I'm sure he'll do that with us tonight when we get into his office, but uh, he knows he's up against it here. Cassie with us right now on 104.5 The Team. When, when, you're, when you're covering, you know, the Golden State Warriors and the Spurs, are you able to pay attention to all the other games, or are you so laser-focused on what's going on right in front of you that that's it? Uh, you know, I usually am pretty laser focused on the uh, on the other games. Uh, I did do a little bit of touring around the Bay Area, so I uh, had the radio on and wasn't as quite as uh, laser focused as I usually am. But we try to pay attention to all because we're going to start hopping series. You know, we'll be in Indiana for the uh, third game of that series uh, with Cleveland. Then I've got Milwaukee and Boston on Sunday, so I try to keep as as close as I can with the others. Speaking of Cleveland, LeBron loses game one. Uh, should we? be worried is is the sky falling i don't know if the sky is falling but there should be concern for sure i mean this unlike where golden state did flip the switch on day one cleveland did not and i heard uh you know george hill was a little stiff this morning and you know there's questions about his health uh for wednesday's game they got the extra day which i guess helps everybody uh on the cleveland side uh, but yeah, there should be com- some concern because uh, you know you shouldn't your offense should not be uh, you know lacking the potency, especially at home. Uh, and we've seen this too often from this Cleveland team this year. So I still think it's going to be a long series. I just think uh, I- I'm surprised the uh, the bell, the alarm didn't go off in game one. They didn't execute as uh, as well as uh, they certainly had hoped. Is that concern level as high to consider another team rather than Cleveland the favorite in the East? You know, coming in, regardless of their game one output coming in, uh, I still had so many question marks on Cleveland that, for me, uh, I had uh, my order was Toronto, Cleveland, 
And then somewhere, Boston, Philly, Philly, Boston, I wanted to see how they reacted. Boston got the first win at home, obviously, in that series. So Cleveland wasn't the uh, absolute that this was going to happen. I, I really have no guess as to who's coming out in the East. I've loved how Toronto has played all year long. Um, you know, they were still a little bit shaky. They pulled it out down the stretch against Washington on Saturday. I thought they should have thoroughly handled that game against the Wizards. Um, and there's still question marks, you know, moving on down the line. Even if Toronto and Cleveland would meet up, the way things have gone the last few years, I need to see it from uh, the Raptors. So that's no lock for me. And Philly just seems like they're too young and they're not ready yet, but sometimes youth is a good thing. You don't know you're not where you're supposed to be yet, and you just play, and they don't even have Joel Embiid back yet. So I think there's a lot of question marks atop the East, and no no gimme for Cleveland. Mark Kest is here with us on 104.5, the team. Kest, you know, is anybody having more fun than Philadelphia right now? I mean, they look like they're having a blast out there. <laughs> they should be. I mean, they're, they're talented, they're young, they brought in really good depth of guys who've played in the playoffs before, like Bellinelli, like Ilyasova. Uh, ben Simmons, you know, he can't even shoot the ball yet, and he could do everything else. I mean, he's brilliant at everything he does. You know, we had big question marks for him after missing all of last year, and I work a lot with P.J. Carlissimo, who worked with Brett Brown on uh, Greg Popovich's staff for so many years in San Antonio, and all he kept telling me last year was, the kid is phenomenal. You can't wait to see him. I'm like, well, where's the jump shot? It's like, doesn't matter. It's coming. We're working on it, but wait till you see this kid. And uh, who has more fun than Joel Embiid than pounding a cheeseburger while he's stretching out on the baseline, you know? <laughs> <laughs> an hour and a half before the game. So uh, they're a lot of fun to watch, and I hope uh, I get them soon on the schedule. I only had them once during the regular season, and uh, that was a, uh, a win for them in Cleveland, which was uh, very impressive. Kessie with us, and uh, Kessie, before we let you go, you, you watch more basketball than any human being alive. Uh, <laughs> I try. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, you're there. How do you, you have no choice. Um, how, who do you uh, do you have any any favorite for the Knicks head coach job? We we're talking about it a lot. We're just wondering if you have any any favorites in there. I don't know if I have a favorite, but it seems maybe it's chalk to say Mark Jackson. I mean, I really felt like, especially being here in the Bay Area, where he set the table for Steve Kerr, if you will, and then Kerr drove it over the top uh, with the Warriors. I mean, I, I really think he enjoyed that stint as a head coach. I know he loves working with the A crew on the television side. And by the way, I think it's funny that Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson are both linked to that job. I, I haven't asked them about that dynamic, how that works, uh, you know, when they when they talk about things. Um, but you're going to have to have some patience. You're going to have to have a guy who, uh, you know, can bring along some young guys. Uh, Porzingis not going to be ready, right, until probably halfway into next season, I'm guessing. I haven't really looked into that situation of late. So, and, and with his ties to the franchise, I know he's a West Coast guy, um, but it feels chalky to say, but I, like, I, I would put Mark Jackson atop my list. Well, I mean, with Aaron Boone already in New York, what about you? Why, why not you for the job? <laughs> That's a good point. Or John Barry, because Aaron Boone was, you know, to uh, Dan Schulman or John Shambi, like John Barry is to me. So I would think with no previous coaching experience, John Barry should be the head coach of the New York Knicks. Well, Just credit us for the story. That. He probably said I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot <laughs> bullet. It would ruin his golfing game. <laughs> he plays 36 holes a day. What are we Holy talking about cow. here? Wow. What is he? What is he? On a cesspitus? What's going on over there? <laughs> all I know is he's a scratch, and I never want to play with him again. That's all I know. <laughs> Kesty, uh, we know you're on the call for tonight, and uh, you're all over the place. Uh, hopefully these stupid weather things don't mess with you too much, and uh, thanks for making time. You know, I, you always hope that once you get to March 15th, and then April 1st, I can't believe I'm saying it, April 15th, we're still watching uh, flights and weather. That's crazy. So thank you very much, and hopefully we'll talk to you guys soon. Will do, man. Thank you so much, Kesty. You got it.